Charging network is a very crucial part of Tesla's mission statement, letting people charge wherever they want to charge, but it's always a very complicated subject because Tesla decided to go with their own proprietary connector when they started mass producing the Model S, and there's different standards now like J1772 as well as CCS that have become very common on other EVs outside of Tesla, and like many have talked about, there needs to be a lot more collaboration on this charging network so that it's not so confusing to switch to an EV, it needs to be as simple as our current infrastructure with internal combustion engine vehicles of just thinking you can pull in at any gas station and fill up your gas tank, doesn't matter what kind of gas station it is, you will more than likely have typical gasoline that you can pour into your car. And getting people off of that standard and onto an electric one is obviously going to be very, very tricky if there's lots of different adapters and connectors people have to adjust to. The fact that Tesla superchargers can only charge Teslas is looked at as both a selling point, but also a drawback to accelerating our transition to sustainable energy because people don't like the confusion of having to put up with some kind of third-party charge network, and in the United States at least, I think it's a primary reason a lot of people choose Tesla over other brands because they know they have that simplicity of the supercharging network that they can just drive up and plug into and it starts working. But an insider at Tesla on Twitter that goes by the name of Bill, I'm not going to try to pronounce the rest, but they've known about certain things going on inside of Tesla before, and they alluded to the idea that soon Tesla would start allowing third parties to charge at superchargers via an adapter, plus using the Tesla mobile app. So, in my opinion, this would make a whole lot of sense given superchargers don't really have any type of display or card reader, so even if Tesla wanted to open up the superchargers and start selling an adapter to convert a Tesla connector into a CCS connector, there still wouldn't really be a simple way of billing them because on Tesla's vehicles, you can see see how your charging status is going and you can see how much you're being charged both with electricity and currency on the interior display which Tesla of course optimizes for they design the software they've controlled the hardware and the charging station it's a very seamless experience and if you started bringing third-party EVs to those chargers they would need a way to bill you they would need a way to show you how much of a charge it's giving in and if you need to move or if you're no longer receiving a charge the car infotainment systems of third-party vehicles can only show so much much, so doing it all through the Tesla app would actually be a pretty simple workaround if you think about it because if you plugged your car into a supercharger you would simply go on the app and hopefully via GPS it would be able to tell which supercharger you're located at and you could plug in exactly what stall you're at and say here's my credit card info or here's how I'd like to be billed and here's how long I'm going to charge for and in concept that sounds pretty simple but the important thing to remember as to why a lot of Tesla fans are not interested in the supercharger network being open up is because Tesla can assure that their vehicles can charge at a certain rate and therefore not be taking up spaces at the supercharger network for very long, whereas there is a lot of older electric vehicles out there that do not charge as fast as Teslas do, and of course the nightmare experience that people already run into with superchargers where there's big lines of Teslas waiting their place in line to actually charge up, that problem would only get exponentially worse if you allowed third parties to charge that were actually charging much, much slower than a typical Model 3, whether it be the Chevy Bolt or a Nissan Leaf, if it's taking its precious time and it's going to be parked there for hours and hours and hours, that's going to result in a longer wait for someone who may have spent eighty to $100,000 on their Model S and X, but because there's all these slow charging EVs, they gotta wait around. So that obviously would not be ideal, but whether or not Bill is correct about this leak of Tesla actually selling an adapter and optimizing the Tesla mobile app to be used for not just vehicle ownership, but also just using it as a method of payment at superchargers for non-Teslas, I still think it's worth talking about and bouncing the idea off of you guys because I think there's a few things Tesla could do to open up the charge network for everybody but prevent it from getting bottlenecked by slow charging EVs. So through the app potentially I think you might be able to demonstrate that certain EVs can supercharge while others cannot. It might be a step in the right direction but not solve the fundamental issue of not any EV being able to charge at any supercharger. But if Tesla started deciding that only only EVs that could charge over a certain speed, let's say maybe 100 kilowatts or 150 kilowatts, if you can charge over that speed, then Tesla is comfortable with you charging at a supercharger. But if you're in one of those EVs that's known for charging really, really slowly and doesn't have a high rate of speed, then say you're not compatible at this supercharger. So it'll refuse to charge. In fact, maybe the app won't even let you set it up. You got to put in your VIN or you got to put in the exact specific model into the app in order for it to allow a charge. So that's just 
just one way they could go about it. Another way, if you don't want to prioritize speed, is putting time limits on each one of these vehicles. In other words, if you had a slow charging EV, you could technically charge at a supercharger at probably the fastest possible speed your EV can support, but only for maybe maximum an hour. And if you're there charging for over an hour, then the rates exponentially increase or the charge stops entirely and the app could be sending you push notifications letting you know, hey, your car's no longer charging or you're gonna get super rates charged because you're not supposed to be charging for very long. That seems to be the approach Tesla is taking with a lot of their superchargers because with both version two and version three, they're hoping that you can basically get from 10 to 15% to 80 to 100% within an hour. And if you start taking much longer than that or if you stay plugged in at a supercharger longer than the car is needing you to be there, that's when they start charging you extra overage fees because hey, you're taking up a stall. Other people might wanna charge there and you have charged up enough. So if they wanna put certain limitations on the supercharger network, I could also see that working as well. The other thing to remember is Tesla with their proprietary connector could technically make an adapter pretty expensive. Meaning if they wanna make this a very profitable decision because the argument could be made if you could supercharge with other EVs on the market that could directly result in some of Tesla's vehicles not selling as well. I know for a fact there are several people in the YouTube community that have said if the Porsche Taycan could supercharge at any supercharger, then they would take that over the Model S. But because it can't, that's why they still drive a Tesla. So I could easily see a lot of people deciding to not buy a Tesla if they knew their other EV could still use superchargers. And because of that, Tesla's gonna need to recoup some of those profits by perhaps charging more for third parties versus if you buy a Tesla, you get pretty affordable rates at superchargers, but if you're charging it with a Taycan, they charge you 50% more per kilowatt hour or 100% more, or the adapter that they sell to allow you to use superchargers could end up being a very expensive $1,000 adapter. And that would still definitely be a bit of an annoyance for people who are transitioning over from gas cars, but it would definitely be Tesla opening up the network a lot more than they are currently, which is straight up nobody can use it if you're not driving a Tesla. But my point is, in today's video, I think it would be a good idea to let Tesla know to the rest of the auto industry that yes, we are willing to charge other EVs. This will help accelerate our transition if someone knows that they can charge at Electrify America or any Tesla supercharger that will give them a lot more peace of mind. Yeah, you have to buy a little accessory and yeah, the supercharging rates might not be that good, but all the reason for you to keep buying a Tesla in the first place. But if you're in a pinch, if you're in a place where you didn't think you would have as much range as you thought you would and you need to charge your car, but you're only near a Tesla supercharger, it won't be just the shape of the plastic that requires you to call a tow truck because Tesla decided that charger network isn't gonna charge your car. It'd be a good thing in a pinch. I still think that most people would still probably buy a Tesla anyway just for the great range and autonomy features, but there seems to be some legislation that could potentially get passed showcasing a lot of credits and benefits to companies that are willing to open up charger networks to anybody and governments want to support that. I totally get why. We want a huge, exponentially convenient charger network for EVs to utilize and at the end of the day I don't think EV chargers need to be as commonplace as gas stations because so many people charge from home but it would be nice if all chargers could be adopting similar standards so that everybody could be on the same electric vehicle team and not have to choose between do you want the Tesla network or do you want Electrify America you want some other network with some other connector I get that at the same time too so what do you guys think Tesla should do in this situation should they open up to everybody or should they just keep it as an exclusive Tesla feature. Personally, I still think vehicles like the Model S and X should get free unlimited supercharging for at least three to five years. Kind of weird to me that they used to offer that and now they don't, but it's Tesla. They got to turn a profit. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.